the world is in turmoil. And if you think of all our history, think of what we've been through, think of the very times we've been in. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, but most importantly, if you would like to join the debate, simply click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the earth. Be sure to mute your watch page before you do so and when you join the hangout please say a few words immediately so we know that you're not here for nefarious purposes. Please also share the show as sharing the show increases the live audience and this in turn increases the diversity of the panel. One last time if you're new to the channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we do have Ali B and Ranty with us. How are you doing both of you? I know Ali B's not here anymore. How are you doing Ranty? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, thanks. You? Yeah, good to have you here. Good show yesterday? It was, yeah. What, your one or my one? Your one. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> it was nice to actually uh, get back in the seat, so to, think, so to speak, because... Uh... Obviously, you know, you get uh, strikes on your channel and you can't live stream, so. Oh, was that um, a struck channel then? It, yeah, I had a, a strike on it that I was uh, trying to sit out, basically. Oh, okay. I thought it was a brand new channel. Well, uh, yeah, my old channel got taken, didn't it? Oh, I so... see. That was taken completely down. It wasn't just... I see now. Yes. Yeah, the, the old channel was taken completely down. This was like... Um, my reserve channel and uh obviously i started uploading stuff on this channel too and i got a strike on this so i had to i couldn't live stream for three months that's no good no good at all <sighs> how long have you got on your one uh your three months channel? everyone keeps telling huh? me to appeal it it's like well you know i'm responsible for what goes on to the channel so i've now had workarounds to stop people from porn bombing the channel but at the time i didn't so it's my fault you know publish and be damned as they say yeah, well, I suppose it's the nature of the of the channel that you have. It's uh, it's a platform that can be abused or could have been abused. You know. Yeah, well, get... it's a baptism of fire, though. You know, you learn you learn how to do it and what to do and what not to do as you go along. And even with things like the sun tracking that I did, and it was a completely open link then, it was still you know a learning a learning curve to figure out how to stop people from doing nasty things. But you know, I think I've pretty much got it covered. I'm sure I'll be caught out again. <laughs> that's part of the nature of the show but it's what keeps it fun for me maybe you should uh make another backup channel and uh you know keep promoting that just in case that you do actually get, i've got get three a, a, i've got three anyway so my my oldest historic channel is called oakley cord then um nathan oakley followed by the one that we're now streaming on so this is actually that channel if you want to look at it in those terms but nathan space oakley is my newest you know, reserve, backup, whatever you want to call it, but this is the backup channel. And then, But I've got an older channel, which is very, very seldom used, called Oakley Cord. So yeah, I've got three. Right. But they all work, you know, I think the the least views one of them has is something like 350, 400,000 views, something like that. Wow. Quite a lot. I think uh, one of my videos, because uh, I started talking about that Las Vegas stuff, uh, one of them had 600,000 views. Wow. In like two weeks. <laughs> so, and then removed completely. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but you can't talk about that kind of stuff when it's going on. No, not when they're actually doing it. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you when you sort of like a, you know that something's not quite right. So you highlight that and uh, you can't do it when the narrative's being 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 laid you could probably talk about it now but you couldn't do it back then i think well, 9 11 as well got the link in the chat and normally it crashes it hasn't crashed and it appears to be there on the ipad so i think the link's there should be working hopefully maybe someone cool. will say eventually if they can't get in but all looks good yeah i noticed uh mick west has had to change his uh his diagram yeah, actually Due to labeled this channel, it. Basically. Yeah, good, good, good. Make the nonsense a bit less confusing for people. Yeah. 
well, it's a, it's, it's a retrospective action, really, isn't it? Because that's been up for how long? How long has Mick West had that standard refraction stuff up? About four or five years? Something like that. And it's only through Anthony highlighting the, the errors in it and the confusion with stuff that he's had to change it. So that would never have come about had he not been on here. Yeah, there's absolutely no labels on it. It was devoid of any labelling. So you've got all these various different measurements and they're labelled as A, B, C, F, whatever. But there's nothing on the <laughs> diagram to indicate what's what. I don't think there it's is. I'm sure the even... refracted figures are still not on there. And <laughs> when I was discussing it with Anthony yesterday, I was like, well, no, you're not going to put the refracted figures on. You're not going to put a hologram of the ball next to the real ball. They're just were talking about the actual measurements of that ball. And that's what they're going to illustrate. And that's all they illustrate. Yeah, it was selective with the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> did you see the eye level thing in there? Yes, I did. Yeah. And Very it deceptive. clearly says visible. You know, yeah, got, the, yeah. it's all visible the drop is visible it's like in Chris's demonstration you know the way they do it is they have you leaning back literally tipping back on your ankles and pointing your camera down at the horizon looking down at stuff it, you have to be you're looking at stuff on a ball and then you take into account how much it's being refracted up and that's your from the hidden value it's refracted up from that position however what they've got in the diagram is this dot, 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 dot with eye level written on it. But then yeah. there's another line that's much less distinct that's below it. And that's where the measurements are taken from, looking at the horizon. It's like, well, that's just a deception to trick you into thinking that you are actually doing that when you're not. You know, you're not looking down. Anthony didn't position his camera pointing downwards. He pointed it straight out. He didn't lean backwards because he's on a sphere looking at a target also on a sphere. None of that applies but they have to put it in the diagram so that you think that it applies. And then it all goes down to the, the same old, same old, which is, you know, are you looking at a horizon that's at eye level or are you actually looking down towards the horizon? You know, and if you get in a plane, I think that answers the question because the horizon comes up to your eye level in a plane and you can see for what, 100 miles? Something like that. A very long you know, way. So, how you doing, Ali? Good to have you. Oh, one sec, mate. Yeah, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No? All right, uh, good stuff. All right. I got very yeah, good I just wait to see. I don't know if Anthony's coming in today, is he? Or anybody? No idea. No. Show runs regardless. I mean, there's been shows where I've had silence for half an hour. I just get, go up and make a cup of coffee, you know, play with my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> when, he's, when he's had um, a good feast of, of baller lies and he, he gets full up on all these baller lies, he gets a bit of indigestion the following day. So I think that's why sometimes he doesn't show. Like, obviously, this Mick West stuff, he's blown that out of the water, so he's probably feeling quite full. Bit of indigestion. Baller indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see that. Was, that was pretty, uh, speak of the devil. <laughs> speak of the devil, and he shall be here. Right? Be here. Yeah, no spam. Let me chat, check out where my sound is coming from. Hang on a sec. Oh, no, I think I've muted it. Or maybe I've not. Oh, there it is. Right. Hang on. So you, have, you haven't got baller indigestion then? I have got baller indigestion, yeah. I, I went out for um, some food yesterday with the family, like, yesterday afternoon. And for starters, I had soundly soup. Um, and I washed that down. <laughs> I washed that down with a, um, a drink of baller's tears. And then for my main course, I had... Um, can't, what did I have for my main course? I can't remember what I had for my main course. You had Mick. But, oh, Mick. that was it, yeah. Mick West magic refraction nonsense. Yeah. And then for, for dessert, um, I had a bit of uh, Isle of Man, because that, that was sweet. <laughs> How you doing, Ali? I'm doing well, uh, Anthony. It's so, good. Uh, Here we go. That was good. It was a great. Let me let me talk now. It was a great presentation there on that um, on Patricia's and kudos to 
getting out there. I thought you guys done a great job and concise and yeah, nice job, nice job. It was lovely not to have any uh, fighting, backwards fighting. It was like a one-way echo chamber. They are valuable yeah, echo chambers. It helps sometimes to get the uh, uh, kind of to get the point across. And and as we're talking about uh, earlier on, there, it's right what uh, Nathan says. You know, I mean, they keep dragging us up to the right-hand side of the island, kind of thing. When all the evidence is down on the uh, left-hand side, we're seeing things that are. Yeah. Feet maybe behind the, the curvature. The, so the, the problem with the with the right hand side is that there's not enough landmarks for us to be able to see. I mean, down the left hand side, there's about fifteen things that we can work on. On the right hand side, you have one thing, and it's the end of one mountain, and that's it. There's nothing else in the image where yeah. to help you identify whether that land is what I say it is, or whether the land is something else. So it's really difficult to to do it with so little evidence. But they have to go down that way because it's the only. When you go down the left-hand side, there's that much of it down the left-hand side that it basically shows that what we're looking at to the right is basically what I say. So they have to ignore the stuff to the left. That's why they're going down the right. But it's... Uh, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing, and I mean, yeah. it's clear to see there's definitely mountains behind that um, that last uh, that last lighthouse. That That's strange. That's really messing with my brain because when I look at you know, I've, I mean, I've been looking at it quite a bit since it... And there's, from the viewing angle, there's there's not a bit of land that you could see that that sits behind that, that's higher than that. That's that's probably the highest point there. You've got a point that's right over the other side, on the right-hand side, the bottom part, that's higher, but the viewing angle wouldn't put the uh, that uh, lighthouse. Well, the other, the other uh, thing is the scale that they want to use puts the boat that's in the photograph, it puts it out of the shipping lane and it puts it right in front of Douglas. And that's not a shipping lane. So the problem with... Yeah, the there scale... are supply vessels and stuff like that that fart about out there and, and fishing. I know I know it's a bit, it's not really an evidence though, uh, that saying about, because, you know, there's, there's, loads of, there's loads of boats that go out there. You've got these supply boats for the... Yeah, but that particular boat for all the rigs one. and stuff like that, and and I know they have to stick to certain shipping lanes, but as I say, um, it's not that. It's just where it's located yeah. in the photograph. If you want to take that that right hand piece is the Isle of Man, what you've got is a what looks like a blurry distant boat that is definitely less than thirty miles from you. So it kind of makes a, no sense. Then again, it's still kind of erroneous. You know, you don't know. We don't really know what the boat is. We think we know what the boat is. It could just be deceptive because it is in that band of refraction, that crappy air, whatever we want to call it. You know, it's still going to be slightly ambiguous. But so is everything on the right hand side of the image. That's why it gets debated so much because it distracts from the 145 mile observation of Ireland and Lagness Lighthouse that distinguishes the end of the Isle of Man from Ireland. You know, people don't want to talk about that. It's like, yeah, because you've got nothing. Well, what's what's kind of funny is that when we're looking at Ramsey, for instance, non-existent Ramsey, there should be a boat in that line of sight. There should be a boat there, and that is missing too. It's literally the, the time that the, it was taken, checking all the charts and everything, there was definitely a very big boat that should have been right in front of Ramsey, and it wasn't there. We couldn't see it. We still don't see it on the video. So clearly the, the refraction or whatever was going on in that area was that great that it completely not only drowned out Ramsey, but it drowned out the boat as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a strange, it's a very strange one that, as I say, it's, it's just as well. Uh, looking at that, I was wondering, uh, uh, Shane, if I can, can, can you give me, I've not got a copy of that high resolution one that you did. You know, yeah, the high I resolution, okay. I wouldn't mind a wee copy of that if I could look at that. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll 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 send you the link. Um yeah, put it in the wee chat our wee chat or something like that if you just send me the Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, sure. I because I was just watching the other night when you were doing it, I was like, you know. Because as I say that it's like the more we identify, the more proof. And it was quite the I mean, we have to admit that the ballers were quite helpful pushing us to, or pushing yourselves to, you know, look at things deeper, be a bit more critical and help. We've got a fine presentation there that it's kind of hard to argue it. Uh, 
arguments. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with it. Well, that was it. It was their um, constant um, denials and stuff like this that caused us to go back and re-examine the, the, the stuff over and over. Um, we wouldn't have. We probably wouldn't have done it to this extent had we not been pushed. So it just makes the evidence stronger. Makes the case stronger. I mean, they've yeah. actually done. They've done something that they. Yeah, nice one. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, they've done something that they they shouldn't have done, kind of thing through their own ineptitude and stu stupidity. They're not very good at uh, in that boycott. I mean, there's a the proof with the boycott kind of thing. You know that never worked. <laughs> well, the you thing know, was they're breaking right? ranks. I mean, the organisation. Yes, they terrible. must have. They, they people, must have suspected what we were doing because literally at that point. We had them on the ropes and it was just it was literally a case of we were just about to drive the nail through the coffin and they decided to boycott because we'd had we'd literally compiled evidence upon evidence of all the things that they'd done uh, and conceded um we knew where everything was we were just about to to get them all on and do the hangout where we just completely crippled them and then they boycotted this is they sniffed it out they sniffed what we'd been doing and how we'd led them down into the trap and uh they never fell into the trap at the end so but we had we we, we had everything we needed up till then though we'd already we'd already won the debate so um <clears throat> i was gonna say I was gonna make I was gonna make a point then. Um should I make it or not? I'm not sure. I can ask the opinion of the panel. Um if I bring this picture back up. Oops. Somebody asked me yesterday um in private message, his question was, How strong are, how how strong are you um with diffused light? And I said, What do you mean? He said diffused light is what we see when we are looking at things from a long way away. And I said, yeah, I understand what you're talking about because um, we see lasers and we see starlight diffuses and obviously they're traveling a great distance. Um, but I wasn't quite sure what he was referencing. And he actually referenced one of my favorite video makers, um, Taboo Conspiracy. And what he was showing was, um, let me just get up Taboo Conspiracy's uh, thing. What he was showing was that in uh, to be conspiracies videos, uh, one well two videos in particular, he um, I'll pull this up to here. He has um, uploads. I'm just going to find the relevant one. Should have had this lined up ready. Uh, it's the one where he's on the lake experiment, and it's quite old. So bear with me while I get back to it. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I'll search on his channel for eight miles. Should come up. All right, there we go. So should I go with the right? So in in what in his videos where he's doing the long distance observations, what he shows is that when he gets um like six, seven, eight miles away, he has a flashlight, and the flashlight shows um it's not this one, it's the other one. It's the eight mile one. I should have had this lined up. Apologies, just bear with me while I find it. Uh, so it's the ro it'll be the word robot and then won't it? R O W B O T H A M. Uh, this, I think this is the one. This is what he cited, and I agree with this completely. What he's saying here is where where um, taboo conspiracy's got his light in the background. His point that he's making is, look how there's no definition in the land in the background. Some would argue it's out of focus. Um, some would also say that because it's so far away, it's the light or the the the, diff the, um, the detail in the landscape is diffused um, because that's partly to do with the way he's got his camera set up at the time, but also to do with the circumstances, but also to do with the, the whole picture that he's working in at the time. All of, all of the factors all together create this soft, blurry background with no definition to it. And the light source that you know is um, a focal point, it's like a parabolica because it's a flashlight, um, it's diffused. And his point was that um, at the further away you go, 
the light splays out to you. Like it, it diffuses, um, in, which is the reason why Jaren's having problems with his laser experiments at the side of the canal, because the laser beam's diffusing over distance. It's getting fatter as it gets towards the end. So that diffusal of light is indicative of um, something being really far away. And the point that the guy um, was making to me once I got once I realized what he was getting at was that in this particular part of the image, we've spoke about this in the past, um, that part of the image is different to this part in the background. And it indicates that there's three, that there's at least two layers here. There's one layer on one side because of the, the change in light, and there's another layer behind, which is governed by the difference in contrast. But what he's saying is look at how little image definition there is. And he said that's diffused light, and that's consistent with some of it being really far away, whereas the boat has got much more um, definition to it, and it's not just a, bl a blur of, of ballness, softness. Um, but in relation to this land, um, can you see that the um, basically the, the, the outline of the land is sharp enough to be able to see it, whereas in the background there's very little sharpness, and that indicates that that is further away in addition to the colour contrast. So basically what he was saying is that the diffused light um, evidence here supports this being further away than this one because there's, there's less diffusal in this position uh, in this uh, photograph. And I thought that's actually a really good point. It's a valid point, um, particularly with regard to the boat. I mean, I know the boat is small, but you can see that there is an angled side to the boat that's receiving light or not receiving light. And there's a clear line between the two. But when it's miles away, it becomes diffused. Obviously, it gets too small, the boat, um, as it gets further away. But the point is, diffused light is supporting this being a lot further away than it appears. And I just thought it was a good point. Nobody else had mentioned it, and I hadn't, certainly hadn't thought about it. And I just thought it was a good point overall. Anyway, just thought I'd share that moment with you all. Yeah, I mean, well, there's two ways of looking at that. It could be the diffused light thing, or it could be simply just because of the crappy air that's in that location. Sure. Because we know that once it gets past sort of Ramsey, we, this is where we're hitting this um, dirty air, and it's it's washed out Ramsey. It's washed out a boat that should be in that location. We don't see it completely vanished. Um, and then obviously the further right you go, uh, the deeper it appears that that um, refraction layer is. Um, so it's two ways of looking at it. You've got a lot of moisture in the air in that particular location because obviously you're looking at something that's a, a span of about 45 50 miles or so from the left to the right that's what you're spanning across uh the isle of man you're looking 30 miles from from the point point a to ramsey so point a being the lighthouse the furthest away to ramsey which has disappeared that's 30 miles you know and um yeah i mean so you're looking over massive distances and weather can be localized so what, what happened to Ali? Did he drop or is he? No, no, he's he's still here. No, he's just doing bits and bobs. I think I think he's here at the minute. He's just popping in and out. Huh. So yeah, I mean, so it's like where you live and where I live. You know, we're looking at about thirty miles difference. Well, you've told me you've told me that it, it snows there, and I'm like, it's snowing. I says it's just peeing down here, or it's dry here, and you're telling me it's raining there. You know, it's localized weather. So <laughs> at one end one end of the Isle of Man, it can be beautiful weather. So you can see for miles and miles, and the other one, it could be peeing down. So on the right-hand side, there's every chance the weather was completely different. And that's just why you're not seeing things. So it's either, like you say, it could be diffused light and being far away. Um, you know, this is where we're going to disagree. Or I'm going to say that it's basically just the dirty air in that location that's just messing everything up that you can't really tell what the hell's there. So it's ambiguous, very ambiguous on the north. But the south is just clear as day. You can see everything you... But that's where all your, that's where your winning points are, is in the south, because you can identify probably at least ten or fifteen landmarks very clearly, and you can identify island behind the, the furthest landmark. So, yeah, um, the north, should, you know, I mean, let's let's put it this way: when you release the video, right, when you first zoom in, you look at the Isle of Man, and then you pan to the left, and then you pan back across up to Ramsey. If you'd have just stopped the video there and not showed anybody anything from the northern side, right? There would have been no argument. Ah, but well, that wouldn't that be like doing what? Yes, um, it would. But this is key. what I'm saying. This is where we are different. This is where you and I and all the flat earthers, as far as I'm concerned, are different because we will release the entirety of the video. So 
we won't hold anything back. We'll show the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we'll try and analyze it. Whereas you get selective um, callers <laughs> who will be very selective with what show, like Soundly, for instance, who's very, very, very um, selective. selective with how he shows. Yeah, he only ever shows curvature. He only ever goes when it's really foggy or misty or anything like you know. He's so disingenuous with the truth. When you, especially when you've got other people that are doing the same observations in the area that are showing those pylons to be straight. You know? plus, plus he's so, only showing it over 16 miles. Yeah, I mean, come on. So when, when I'm saying that he's very selective, he's very selective and he never gives anything out that cannot be shown to be, have curvature. Whereas you, you could have gone and cut the video off at halfway and said, right, I'm releasing half of this video and all your money shots in the south. You would never have had to go to the north. But you wanted answers in the north too. So you, this is why you released the video in its an entirety. And you said, there's the south, there's the north. And it leaves the door open for them to come in and try and uh, move the argument from the south to the north. When actually the north is much clearer and it's just in crappy air. You can see that with the band of refraction underneath it. But they want to talk about that. They want to talk about the area where it's ambiguous because it drags the observation down. So if you get into that conversation with them, it's going to be a lose-lose. Stick to the south and you're on a win-win. You know, 145 miles, beat that. Well, Al K <laughs> is in chat. I'm just wondering if Al K is ever going to release his final, you know, 10 seconds of video. Because without that video, Al, you can't debunk me. And I'm asking you again, can you produce that video, please? Just 10 seconds will do. Did we? Did you get the same land that I got? Um, and what I want to do, Dave, if you, if if I'm presenting now, while the dogs kill each other, yeah. Um, so, Mick West refraction. Um, on the welcome back, Ali. Hi, right, how you doing? Yep, that's me. Good, good. I got sniped by my telephone. <laughs> that's okay. Um. <laughs> What are you talking about? Flat Earth Debate 117. And if you go to around about 20, 20 minutes in, I think it was. Oh, no, it might have been Flat Earth Debate 118. Where is it? That's no, 117, I think. About 20 minutes in, wasn't it? There it is. 30 minutes. All right, one second, Shane. Stick that link in the chat again because I, I lost it. If you don't mind, mate. Sorry, carry on, Anthony. <laughs> Okay, so it, on on the debate 117 at around about the 35, 36 minutes mark, I start attacking Mick West's magic, magic, mathematics, nonsense website to do with this apparent ball that we live on, and fundamentally it was to do with this um, this diagram at the bottom, um, and the point I was making was that he referenced all of these reference points that was like horizon distance was a value of a, the bulge was a value of b. Distance was D, radius was R, viewer height was H, but at the top of it, where all the numbers are, um, none of these labels appeared. Um, and, they, and he was using different words. Shut up, you two. He was using different words or different adjectives to describe these labeling. And fundamentally, I'd never really challenged it, questioned it, or thought anything more about it. But it was only in this debate that I was looking at it, and somebody said to me, do you realize how bad that, that labeling is? I said, I know, but it's just the way it is. And the reality is, shut up. <laughs> um, hang on a minute. And the reality, the reality is, of course, if you labelled a diagram, a mathematical diagram like this in GCSE maths, it would fail. That would be a fail. So I attacked it on the basis that it made no non, it was nonsense. It made no sense. So he's obviously changed it now, which is great in one sense because um, he acknowledges that he did make a mistake with it because it was naff. But what he's now sh showed is like, I I'm going to question this with the panel because um, I'm not actually sure this is correct because. The way he's got this value of drop, it appears to me that the drop would be from this point here rather than from this the perpendicular point. Because wouldn't it be the point that's perpendicular to the, the radius of the Earth? The drop would be calculated from here, which has started to drop away because of the... Yeah, he's definitely put it in the wrong place. That value of G should be uh, on a parallel... Well, it should be running up the green, basically. So he's effectively knocked off a little bit of uh, height on that. Yeah, he's, he's showing it as higher as what it actually would stop it. And he's, he's actually included tilt. Have you noticed that he's put a tilt in now? Yeah. Well, have you ever seen a building tilt? 
Well, they don't. It doesn't do it, does it? Because it's like no. sixty-nine miles. It's like one right. degree. Here's it, right. Well, Mick West is clearly watching this, right? I want Mick West, seeing as he's done this new, he's he's changed all this stuff, right? So this is obviously he's watching and he's listening in. And he just doesn't say anything. I want Mick West to reference at least one building that tilts and don't do the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right. Well, I what I was going to ask him was, um, <laughs> my dogs are like attacking me. I was going to ask Michael or Mick, why does he refer to, um, somebody's asked a question and he's talking about refraction um, to do with the stars and a few other bits and pieces, but the value of 7.6R, which I have a big problem with because it's based on, it's based on a radius. He says his own words are, it's just a rough approximation of the effect of refraction on the apparent radius of the earth. Why do you use the word apparent? Because if it's a fixed thing that we live on a ball, the, the need for the word apparent is non-existent because it would be factually the case that we live on a ball. So the correct phraseology would be the radius, not the apparent radius. So I want to know, uh, like, why have you actually used this word, Mick? It's completely redundant and it implies for me as a cynic, it applies that you know that we don't live on a ball and that you're using that word as a, t as a tilt of the cap. Um, and the reason why I think this is because when we did the debates with Paul, um, we uh, Nathan innocently asked whether or not the um, Ordnance Survey maps... Frank James, some... hello, Frank. Hello, Frank. Hi, Frank, how you doing? Frank. Great on to mute. Bye-bye, Frank. You need to say hello, not go on mute. If you think the snipers are getting in today, you've got another thing coming, because I'm on guard today. Yeah, and I've got a bit of freedom to be able to relax. Um, but, but, yeah, so Nathan asked whether or not the... Um, the uh, ordnance survey maps were based on a ball or whether they were based on a flat plane. And when I went to look at the wording for the um, the geodetic maps, it was obvious that they were, well, in my opinion, they were given a tilt of the cap because they were used, they used the same kind of word. It's, it said um, in their website, it said that the world is described as a globe or a sphere. And I thought the world is described as a sphere, not the world is a sphere. So they used a word there to dilute the importance of the, the phrase that they were using and mixed on it here. So I kind of want to know why does he use the word um, 76R is the apparent radius and it's not, as a matter of fact, the radius. Because I just think he's being because sneaky. You know, like the way people say... I can no, answer I'm... that. It's because they don't know. It's because there's all, the, the, the Earth is not, a, according to them, a perfect sphere. That's why they get away with that word apparent. It's not a sphere and people need to stop. I've got a photograph or, or a... A computer generation of what the Earth looks like, and everybody's seen it. You know, it's it's and it's a, it's all got different points of gravity, or the gravity is stronger here than it is there, and uh, all that kind of stuff. It's because they use the word apparent, is because I'm not sure. Well, I was going to say because I mean, I mean, it appears if you say apparent, it means it appears to be. You could say. Well, I've heard Miles the Liar Davis describing it as a spheroid. I've heard other people describing it as spherical. I've heard Neil deGrasse Tyson describing it as oblate. Um, an oblate it's spheroid. A geoid. Well, a geoid. Yeah. They use that in the satellite in the air. When they're doing a satellite geodesy or geodesy or whatever, they, they, they use that depending on what they're, they're measuring. Uh, depending on what they're measuring, they use the sphere. Uh, sorry, the sphere, the ellipsoid, or the geoid for you know, taking heights and stuff. Yeah, but they're going, they're going and referring back to the WGS eighty four, and they're getting the geodetic survey readings to start their survey, and then they survey out from that point and essentially perform planes planar surveying from that point. But when they use the WGS eighty four, they're just getting their datum point, if that's the correct te terminology from the inside marked point on an azimuthal equidistant projection. So when you actually look into the datum that they use, it's based on an AE map. Yeah, it's flat. And the thing yeah. is with satellites, right, what people don't seem to realise is with the satellites, if you want to see their balloons or whatever, it doesn't matter. But the ones that are actually uh, uh, doing the uh, geodesy, they're actually, they measure it as a plane and an algorithm or a, a program on board the satellite uh, actually put on a, the sphere, right? And then that data, the spherical data, is then, um, uh, what do you call it, signaled down to the uh, ground base. So it actually comes up as a sphere already. So the satellite 
puts it on, it projects onto a sphere and then sends the spherical dimensions down to the ground base. The, the, yeah, like like if they used you know, like the way they used to do it with the stars. But in the, if you actually look at how uh, WGS84 works, they've got a sphere wrapped around this flat plane, which is the azimuth equidistant projection, which they have to mark off to say, you know, this is where all the bureaucracy comes in, in terms of getting it absolutely spot on versus that datum. So what they're doing is they're, they're taking what you're saying is a satellite location and then plotting it in on the outside of the sphere in the WGS84. Well, that's like a tantamount to saying that you're looking at the celestial sphere on a flat plane. That's basically what it looks like yeah. to me when you actually have a, an exploded diagram of what the WGS84 is and you can see the azimuth equidistant projection at its centre and the lines that they draw from the spheroid that surrounds it in terms of lining up the North Star and things like that. It, it basically negates that need and you can just go from the datum. But as I say, the, the map it's based on is the azimuth equidistant projection. Well, yeah, absolutely. It measures it flat. End of story. It measures it flat. And I, I, I always laugh when they say, oh, well, if you get a ball, if you get the, the an orange orange, and then spread out, no, no, you've got that back to front, numpty heads. The fact is, it's measured as a plane, and then they wrap the flat information around the, around the sphere. So it's it's a, they, they actually change it, what they say they do, because they, they actually satellites can't, determine whether the Earth's a sphere or not. It's just gathering data. It's bouncing signals. It's bouncing signals and uh, uh, gathering data. That's all it's doing. That's all it's doing. And it's reading it a planar geometry. In the uh, story. Nath, I've just been given a link to um, somebody. The, the message is, um, I see you're on the debates at the minute. I see Matrix Breakout has done a video regarding Isle of Man. Um... It's a five-minute video. Do you reckon we should debunk it whilst we're on, or we should like do it whilst we're on? Because he's, he's he's put this video out, and let's. I'm just looking through it to see what he's maybe, talking maybe about. Maybe do it tomorrow after we've actually had time to look at it, rather than dissecting it up live under pressure. There's just no point. We've we we are absolutely not under any obligations to do anything. We're under zero pressure. You know, the battle has been won. If we choose to chop a few people's heads off in the aftermath, then maybe, but we'll do it at our leisure rather than live, if that's okay with you. I mean, if you want to, then, you know, you can be, go, be my guest. You can do what you of, like. I kind of agree with uh, Nathan on this one. We can just, uh, we can relax, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, they're just scrambling for position now. I mean, they're desperate, you know what I mean? They've got, you know, they've, as, as we keep saying, what happened to Alki and Miles? Uh, with her um, with her observation, and then that uh, I heard that Miles saying, "Oh, I didn't go down. We didn't go down there to bunk uh, to debunk Anthony. We went down there because it's the best place to get observations." I thought you. And... <laughs> what a lie! What a lie. I mean, Sorry, I, 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 I was I was basically threatened by Jeremy. Um, not threatened, threatened, but it was threatened with a little with a with a non capital T. He said, um, well, we've got someone going back to St. B's. And he never actually said the words to debunk you, but that was clearly the intention. He was trying to tell me that they've got someone going back and that if you're lying, Riley, we're going to find you out. And guess what? They come back with absolutely nothing. They spoke about an hour for turbines. I mean, I don't know how we got an hour out of them turbines, but he got an hour out of the turbines. And then he got another video about um, something that I would mentioned on Nathan's live hangouts in October-ish. And, I mean, there was nothing there coming back. Yet, yeah. all the hype that they were building up nicely to didn't happen, did it? Because, guess what? I wasn't lying. Yeah, and I find that, I find that, do you know, it's like that, it's like that famous saying, accuse the enemy of your own discretion, indiscretions kind of thing. And that's all they're doing. And, that, do you know, if you hear their rhetoric, that it, it's, it's almost laughable that they're accusing uh, people of doing things that, that they do themselves, and it's as if they're oblivious to it. Well, what they I mean, talk about indoctrinated, talk about indoctrinated and blind to the and bias. You know what I mean? They're, and they can't see it. They can, they just cannot see it. You know, they're then people that uh, like that Russian uh, defector guy said about the propaganda thing. He says it wouldn't matter if you brought evidence, pictures, the whole lot. He said they won't. They, they just will not take it on because it causes such a uh, emotional, uh, what do you call it, reaction within their brains. 
It's not even cognitive. It's not even reason. If you were using reason on it, then you would know it, they were emotionally uh, uh, reacting. They don't actually seem seem to realise that for all their logicity or they think their logic or whatever, they're actually reacting with their emotions. And you know what happens there? You know, you never react with your emotions. But unless, unless in an act of kindness, but certainly not in, you know, that way that they seem to get, get affected with it. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Just interesting. <laughs> well, the rhetoric has uh, taken a step up, basically. It's like after I went on Patricia's show, I've got a bit of an echo going on there. Is that you? There's a, my mic was open because there was a, a Chinook going past. Right, okay. Um, yeah, you know, the rhetoric has gone through the roof. It was funny yesterday. Uh, there's been some sock accounts made. Um, what was it called? Lumberjack. Lumberjack's back. But I thought it was quite funny, actually. Um, but then they turned it into very nasty stuff about um, something that I experienced when I was, like, three years old. <laughs> and it's like, are you actually going to go down this route and it's just ridiculous. But they're exposing themselves. They're exposing themselves with a. a they're actually, if you watch these people, they're actually exposing themselves. The their, their, their psychology by their actions, right? And and for them to do that, I was listening while that was going on, uh, uh, Shane. And I'm telling you, mate, it was like, you know, they're jumping on. I, I thought, oh my God, what's wrong with you, people? <laughs> I, I mean, they're really. I believe they're damaged. They're not. They're not well people. And how that and, and how that see, confirms how or how that confirms or denies the flat Earth? It, it's just ridiculous. And they think that by saying stuff like this is going to get a reaction from me, but well, it's not. I find it quite hilarious actually that they would go to such lengths to to do this. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you say, it does show the kind of persons that we're dealing with, you know. And so I always think what they're doing. Sorry, huh? sorry. I always think what they're doing. They're, their state of mind, you know, their, their frame of mind when they're actually in the action of doing that. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, God, that must be really twisted inside their head. They're not sort of sitting thinking, oh, la, 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 dee, 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 typey, typey, and do all that. You know, they're really, they're driven by, I don't know, it's almost like a a hatred, can I say? Or maybe not a hatred, but certainly something akin uh, to hatred or, or whatever, because it's, it's to me, it's... It's very strange behaviour that they get. They get so angry and vitriolic uh, towards you. You know, they just. It, it's so funny. It, it's not funny. It's actually quite worrying that these people are actually on. Uh, you know, they accuse us of being crazy and stuff like that. Okay, we might be thinking a little bit out of the box, but these guys are psychologically damaged. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's, there's, there's our belief. Our, our belief is in a flat Earth. They don't believe in it. So, so why? It's like I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I'm not going to go and hang around <laughs> a hangout where people believe in Santa Claus and turn up every single day and insult them, right? I'm just not going to do that. I mean, I don't believe in fairies, but I'm sure if I went looking on on uh, YouTube, I could find a, a live fairy stream where people are talking about fairies and believe in fairies. I'm not going to go in there and say, you're all insane and, and troll them for months and years, you know, and make fake accounts. I mean, what goes on in their head? If you don't believe in flat earth, go away. Yeah. You know, so exactly. just just move on. Go and do something. They expose, the life, they expose themselves in the chat. And it was quite good that um, I noticed when they did boycott, like different people were coming on the hangout. You know, there was people we hadn't seen or we hadn't seen or heard before. So it was kind of, but I suppose they've been pulled into line now as well. You know, because it must be quite intimidating uh, before when all these ballers were on and it was just distraction. They just shout over you and stuff like that. It was obvious tactics. You know, they'd sat down and talked about it. Right, if they talk about this, just you start arguing and I'll start arguing and then we'll just, so the word doesn't get out, you know. I just want to um, mention a couple of things in support of what Ranty was saying uh, with regards to the, the Lumberjack story. Um, the line that he said was that children are more susceptible to this kind of thing. And he's absolutely correct. Um, if anybody's done any studying whatsoever on, psycho on psychology, particularly sci child psychology, yeah, um, yeah. you will learn that children do experience things that adults cannot explain. And there is no logic for it other than something extra no um, paranormal, if you want to use the word. And I use that loosely. Um, because uh, if I share my screen a sec now, 
um, children are in touch with something that they lose the contact for later on in life. And this particular example of a story, and it's on a collectiveevolution.com um, website. So if you're a baller, this would be absolutely proof of something that's true because it's got the word evolution in it. Um, to us, we take it with a pinch of salt because it's not necessarily true. But nonetheless, this three-year-old boy remembers his past life. He locates his previous body and identifies the man who murdered him. And what this guy, what basically the story is that um, this body was buried and it was this kid that was buried in this body. Um, he was killed by somebody in a village somewhere and um, he came back in the afterlife as this body. And he went to the point where he was killed and he told people to dig there, they'll find a body. And people were like, nah, no way. Anyway, cutting a long story short, they dug out, found the body, and there was um there was a there was an axe wound to the skull. Um, he then pointed out where the axe was uh, discarded. So they got, went and got the axe and found the axe. And again, the kid was correct. And then the kid took them to the house in the village where the guy that lived there still um, was responsible for the killing. And the guy was arrested and convicted of murder based on the information that this kid gave. Is it true? I don't know. Is it believable? Hell yeah, because there's evidence here, because there's a photograph of a skeleton, right? So if, if you're a baller, you would go, ah, oh, that's absolutely true. But me, I'm a little bit more sceptical. I'm not sure whether this is true or not, because I tend to not believe this kind of stuff, because I don't know how anything could possibly happen like this. There is quite a lot of stories, though, um, Andy, about people say. doing this before. This isn't the only example I've seen. Throughout I, the I, I've that's seen what I was going to say. That, that's what I was going to say. That was my point. In isolation, if this was one story on its own, I'd be a little bit... I wouldn't believe this, I'll be honest. But there are loads of them like this where kids have been involved in extraterrestrial experiences that no adult can explain. They know stuff that we shouldn't... that, that we should not know. There's loads of it. So when Rancy's talking about um, the lumberjack in the wardrobe, there are thousands of stories like that. And it's well documented that children do have, A, imaginary friends, B the ability to see things that adults cannot see, which is why they never believe they're never believed, right? Child children don't lie about certain things. And one of the things they don't lie about is their friends that they talk about or whatever. They don't they don't make these things up to them children. They're absolutely real. Anybody with yeah. any knowledge or experience or education in uh, in psychology will tell you children have frequently experiences like this and adults laugh at them because it's nonsense, right? But they all, well, not all of them, but a huge proportion of them report this kind of thing. So Ranty's not on his own here. There are thousands and thousands of people. And yeah, okay, I can see why the ballers would laugh at him. And it is laughable in some respects because um, it is laughable, right? On the face of it, it is laughable. But when you dig deeper and you go and actually do a bit of studying around this phenomena that children have this thing, this sixth sense that they only have for a few years, there are thousands of people that have experienced this on the record officially and not just to, like all these weird things they, they know stuff that they should not know and they speak in a prose that is adult language for words that like language that they haven't yet developed anyway so it's it's crazy and it has, it has experts baffled because it makes no logical sense so hence the reason why people do believe in reincarnation of some form or some some else because there is a lot of evidence to support it. So Rancy's not crazy when he said about the lumberjack. Sure, on the face of it, it seems crazy. But that's because you're ignorant and haven't looked into it at all. I don't, I don't think it doesn't. I don't think it even seems crazy, not in, not in today's, because as you've just said, there's been loads of studies that this stuff gets done. So it doesn't even, to me, it doesn't even sound uh, crazy when someone uh, says that, especially a child. You know, because as you say, I, I believe that, you know, we, we, are, made, we, are, we are made dumber. Yeah, because right? if you look at the logic and and the uh, of a, of like a three year old child, they're so I don't mean honest as I, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but they're so uh, they state the obvious. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like they see it as it is kind of thing, and they do say they do reckon that a child's uh, personality gets moulded from birth. Yeah, to about eight eight year old, nine year old, and and that child's personality is kind of. You know, the overall, not the, the intricacies of, of whatever, but their overall basic world view and their personalities have been decided by the time they're eight or nine year old. Now, yeah, which is saying that my I mean, that's studies, they've got thousands of studies to uh, to back that up, just what I said there. You know, so uh, 
I mean, I think this this thing about why they poo poo all this, uh, all that kind of stuff you just talked about, is because then it would be like them admitting there's a god kind of thing. Now, as I say, either way, I'm not really bothered about it. I don't know, so I can, I don't really uh, comment on it. I'm kind of middle of the road regarding that kind of thing. Um, but I think it... that when people hear that, that I mean, to enter into uh, actually accepting that that goes on. You're kind of accepting that you don't know. Because that kind of knocks all your physics, all your mathematics, because you haven't got mathematics to uh, describe, uh, actually describe, you know, uh, that actual event that happens. And I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of cases of this happening by, by kids, kind of thing. And I think these people are scared. They're actually scared by it. And it scares them, you know, because of their beliefs. Well, but my second point, and then I'll come back to Ranty so we can comment on this, but I'll just rattle, rattle this out quick. Um, the Ghost Hunter TV series went on for, um, in, I think it, in England it went on for three series, and these are people that believe that there are ghosts. Now, my position is I've never seen a ghost. I don't believe they exist. I believe that there are practical and day-to-day -day explanations for everything that we see that we attribute it, that we attribute to being to ghosts, like a door shutting. It's probably because there's a window open. It's not because there's a ghost that's closed it right that's my view i don't believe in ghosts i've never seen any evidence of a ghost i don't think they exist however there are other people that believe that there are ghosts um, and these people are generally described by people like me as most more impressionable um, or more susceptible to nonsense but i don't go around attacking them because they believe in ghosts because i don't believe in them so when it comes to, and it's the same for all religions those people that believe and worship the sun or allah or god or whatever these people believe what they believe because they believe it and it's their it's their reality it's their world but i realize that we don't live on a curved earth and i don't accept it's, that we live on a curved earth so I, I, I get attacked is. so it's like we're all wired differently right and you say that some people that can see different spectrums of light for instance um, and it's possible that there could be other living creatures in this world that we just cannot see because we can only see in certain wavelengths. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. yeah, so if you can only see in certain wavelengths and you can't see something that's like, um, an, let's say, ultraviolet, right? Well, we can't see in ultraviolet or x-rays or anything like that. Well, let's suppose in something lived as an x-ray being on this planet we'd never see it it would be there but we'd never see it now if your brain was wired differently and your uh cognitive whatever it is there was something different about you where you was able to tap into that wavelength and see it like some people these mediums and stuff that say they can see um you know ghosts and stuff it's possible there could be other things living that we just don't see Absolutely, because we aren't, we aren't <clears throat> tapped into that to like they are. I don't, I don't really like the ghost analogy. I think a better analogy would be um, you are is, uh, flat, saying the Earth is flat is is saying is like saying the sky is orange because we can observe everyone can observably see that the sky is blue, just like everyone can observe that we live on a sphere of Earth. Um, that's a better analogy than the ghost analogy, I think. But that's not yeah, I don't like that saying. ghost thing either. I, I, I just think of it as energy. I, I just usually say it's like an energy or something like that. But I don't like the ghost. Flat, flat Earth is like pointing out something empirically obvious. I mean, it, okay, so if I went around saying the sky is orange, that's the same thing as Flat Earth. It has, the ghost analogy is bad. <clears throat> because, because everyone can see um, the sphere. Everyone can see the sky is blue. The, the ghost thing, it's pretty hard to prove either way. But everyone can't see the sphere earth no one gets that perspective no one gets to see the earth as a ball and what we do observe is a flat earth hence us looking at the isle of man for so long because it's obviously flat yeah i can't argue with that <laughs> i'm waiting for p mass to respond oh to respond to what well i've said that oh, the isle well, of man depicts a flat earth in no uncertain terms so you can see things at 51 miles and 145 miles, and that's only possible uh, if it's flat, unless you want to believe in holographic projections. So, I mean, even if that was true, there's still thousands of other points of evidence that would disprove the flat earth, so it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, but would you agree that there's a preponderance of evidence building up against the idea that we live on a sphere, spheroid or whatever nonsense word you want to describe it as? I don't. I don't think there's any evidence that there is What's an there? absolute boatload. Just type in the word flat Earth and then see what comes up. You'll see that there's a sh shed load. <laughs> I see a bunch of propaganda. Yeah, I see a bunch of propaganda as well. It usually starts with the word NASA. Three miles, three miles. What about this thing? Do you do you uh, believe that the Earth is the size that they say it is now? Yes. Right. Okay. So, well, that stuff that working with um, uh, what do you call it, the Isle of Man, that proves uh, beyond doubt that it's not because when you use the calculator, it's too far. It's it's it should be disappearing. You shouldn't be seeing that, you know. Now, if, if you can if, if you can say the Earth was bigger, I mean, if, if I was a ball earther, right, and I, I people handed out this information showing these photographs, instead of running about uh, trying to debunk it, I would, but my first thought would be, well, that's interesting. Why is that? And it could point to, on from a baller's point of view, it could, uh, or a conspiracy theorist baller point of view, is the Earth is bigger. Than what they're telling us so they are hiding land or something because to to deny the fact that we are seeing objects that should be over the curvature at that at the mathematical equations that they've given us they've supplied us with it doesn't work and it doesn't work on the planet that they described for the fact that we're living on an uneven planet and they say that it's thicker at the bottom so that that mathematics that they're given that wider area at the bottom of the fire there will be totally different mathematics so what's the point of using this miles per square every there's like no point to that right to having that if you're going to use that calculation right if is it that calculation is for a sphere use lot say the earth is not a sphere and your science will say it's a geoid and it's got different gravitational there's different masses of land different uh, heights it's not a, a perfect sphere so that would say to me then suggest to me then if it's not a sphere what's the point of doing a linear uh, a linear uh, equation what's, what, what's the point of that because it wouldn't describe absolutely nothing you would have to for the specific coordinates that you are taking your measurement you would have to know the, the exact radius of the earth at that point but yet, when they do this uh, point, they say, oh, well, it, well it's 6,000 blah, blah all the way around when it's not. And they'll say, oh, it's only 1,000 feet up. But that's a big difference. There's a big difference there. You know, the, the Earth, uh, if, if you want to accept it's a planet, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. And people get that into their heads. There's, the, the mathematics wouldn't work. That's, that's just my opinion anyway. And so if it is a ball, like you believe it is, it's, it's, it's way bigger. Without a doubt, it's huge. I'm going to do a quick link. We're coming up on approximately one hour left of this live stream. Hope you're enjoying the debate thus far. If you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside the show while it's live, so toss me a book or two in there if you're enjoying these streams. But most importantly, if you would like to join the debate, simply mute the page you are currently listening to, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the earth. Be sure to say a very swift hello when you join the hangout so we don't remove you on consideration that you might be doing something nefarious. So please say a very quick hello. If you've not done so already, please share the show as this increases the live audience, which in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show. And one last time, if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. There is approximately one hour left on this broadcast. Yeah, I don't think it'd be possible for him to lie about the shape because people could observe it. And if they were lying, then you could just observe it and it would be changed. I don't... But we no, can't I don't mean the lying p Mars. It's the model that they give. If, if, for example, in satellite uh, geodesy, depending on what they're measuring, they use three different models, but they've got about 50 different models of the planet. NASA's got 50 different uh, models of the planet, right? But for that uh, geodetic survey, they use three. They use the, the ellipsoid, the mean sea level, and uh, the geoid. And they take their picks. So they're not like lying. 
they're given free, they're not trying to hide it. And how can you see if it's a geoid, whether it's a perfect sphere or it's an ellipsoid or it's fatter? That's something we can't ever see and we never will see it. You know, so it's not that they're lying. It's just they're, they're, they're just hiding the fact that it's what the place we live in is a lot different than what they're describing and they're getting found out for it. That's all because they're, because they're, yeah, well, whatever. They're just getting found out for it because the maths are not working. The refraction's up the spout. We've got big cameras now that can look a lot further. You know, we are seeing things now that we would never see with the naked eye. That ship over the horizon now does not go over the horizon at, at three miles. We might be only be able to see three miles. But that, when you stick a telescope there, that ship's still in sight, and it shouldn't be. But there you go. That's that's why I that that's why I uh, uh, believe in the flat Earth. Yeah, absolutely right. It's because P900. I want I want evidence. Sorry, P nine hundred's a globe killer. Basically, it's an excellent camera for doing what we need in flat Earth. We don't need really glorious looking pictures. They don't need to look, you know, like a, an art shot. Just need detail at a, a very long range. That's it. And that's what we have. And that's why Ranty was able to match up the landscape so so well and have it look exactly the same and be able to see all the details at, you know, 50 miles. It's ridiculous how good the detail is at that distance. But that's purely down to the technology in the cameras. Yeah, and, and the thing was with that, uh, if, I mean, people keep debunking this thing. There's, there was a web page called, uh, called um, Beyond Horizons or something. I think everybody knows. And the world record photograph was 250 miles. It was done at a height or whatever. But I followed a thread in the other thread, and it led, led to a, 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 like a, a, what do you call it, a discussion board or whatever you call it. I can't remember what you call it. But one of them. And these guys were professional photographers, right? They were professional photographers. And even they were saying, you know, how the hell... It, they were amazed that they could see as much as they could see because they'd be accounting for two kilometres of refraction, guys. And these guys are professional photographers. It's, their, it's you know, it's, it's what they do, man. You know, they climb up these huge mountains and see how far they could look. And even there was a big discussion about it they were having not about flat earth or anything like that but they were just they were pointing out that you know how how the hell what what's going on here this is amazing you know they were totally amazed that they were getting two kilo two kilometers two kilometers of refraction in less atmosphere you know what i mean yeah because they were up like thousands of meters <laughs> so they can't say oh it's uh, or the atmosphere it's refracting or, or whatever or stuff like that and these guys didn't know what was going on and these guys are they do it for a living they're not flat earthers or anything like that so. and that's stuff like that you know you know and there's a hundred bits of little things all we do with photography you know astral everything you know there's loads of little clues yeah like when you so. go out in a boat and you sail into the sea when you come back to land you can see the mountains before you see the beach because the earth is a sphere Well, that's that's kind of that's kind of stretch, isn't it? Well, I, I can see so. the mountains, so the Earth is a sphere. That's a bit that's a bit of a stretch, though. Logically, you can the see end, them I, before I, the beach. The beach will disappear over the horizon, and you can see the mountains still. No, that, that just means you don't see the, oh, uh, the horizon because of the, the light. Ah, oh, but it's not nothing to do with that. It's to do with the light. But, I mean, we've we've already proved it. There's this mirroring effect and stuff like that. Exactly. That you don't even see that it's mirroring, right? So that that stuff, you know, I mean, you can't expect to go fifty miles away and see the beach, not with the the, the amount that's fifty miles of water. You can't, that's got to travel over. You can't expect to to tell people the Earth is flat or you know we're being misled about the shape when they can clearly see it's not. Well, they can't, you see, because we don't have the technology to go high enough. Nobody does. I just described, Ranty, how they could by sailing out into the ocean, and everyone has the technology to sail out into the ocean. And do what? I don't have the technology to sail out into the ocean. Here, oh, here, okay, hey, Ranty, what? you go into the ocean, right? And you yeah. wait, you, like the, the horizon, it's all water, and as you sail back to land, you'll see the, the mountains before you see the beach, proving that we live on a sphere. It's very simple. Well, no, no, not really, because you know that at the horizon, you've got all that mucky air that just hides. And what you're forgetting is that that mountain at some point, it's... Um, well, then it's, the mucky air, why doesn't it hide Ireland? 
Why doesn't the monkey air hide Ireland when you can see it so far away? Why doesn't it? Where is it then? Well, that was a one-off, wasn't it? I imagine it was probably. Um, it probably does if you think about it, because the, the monkey air helps you when you want it, and then you know. No, 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 no. Just no, on no. a clear day, on a clear day. When you don't need video, it, then it doesn't exist because no, that's no, no, very no. convenient for your cognitive dissonance. It, it only exists if we can prove that it does. You know, like curvature, it exists if you can prove that it does. Miles Davis. Why? Why do prove. hurricanes spin the direction they do? Hooray! Of the Coriolis Hooray, effect. Hooray. Speak, speak, speak. A rave. Too late. Why do hurricanes want p That's that's a real person. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> is that the real Arif or not? I'm pretty oh, sure it is. Speak. You know what it's like. They've got fakes of everything, haven't they? And if they don't speak, they've got to go. I don't, I don't think it was. He didn't. He didn't speak. No, he didn't speak. Um, what were we saying then? I've lost track where we were at. Dirty air, right. So, um, PMAS, you understand the inverse square law dictates that objects that get further away from you get smaller, correct? Um, angular size. I understand that's a, a part of perspective or something. Well, it's just the angular size changes. Yeah, it gets smaller as it gets further away. Correct? Right. So, a mountain that's, say, 1,000 feet tall, as it gets further and further away, it seems to shrink to the observer because it's getting further away. It's not actually shrinking, is it, of course? But to the observer, it's getting smaller because it's getting further away. Yeah? Sure. So using your accepted level of knowledge, uh, of proof, logic and reason tells us that the further that 1,000-foot mountain gets, eventually it gets small enough to fit under or in that layer of what we call the, the dirty air, the refraction layer, the mirrored layer. Because it's got that small, it now sits in it. So if we do indeed, li if we do indeed live on a flat plane, then any item will get small enough to sit in it. And if you have that layer of refraction or that layer of dirty air, you would perceive that that would be curvature, which is, of course, what Miles did when Miles did his video. He, see, he saw the layer of refracted air thought it was curvature, and then put a video out saying that it was. Completely That's... failing to notice that there was mirroring going on, and he wasn't looking at curvature at all. You just create ad hoc hypothesis to discount what we could empirically observe, and I would rather just mm. go with empirical observations than your crazy hypothesis. Well, we okay, have empirical so observations me... with the Isle of Man. Okay, so I've, I've got my screen shared now. I will bring up Miles the Liar Davis, and I'll show you what I mean. Miles Davis, flat earth. And Miles Davis went out to debunk me, but whilst he was out there, he did a video that was to do with... Which one was it now? Uh, this one, I believe it was. And in this video... I'll knock the sound off. In this video, Miles Davis... There's the Sellafield light uh, power, power plant. I have the exact same picture. Um, in this video, what he did was he found um, an outcrop of land which he observed at three different elevations. I don't know how he measured five meters of elevation. I'd love to know, but um, I'm not going to make. It, I'm not going to dwell on the point. But what you can see is that the land has got this layer of sky that separates the land from the water, and we call that the dirty air, the mirroring, the refraction layer, or whatever. Miles fails to notice this, and he calls it the curvature of the Earth because when he changes his elevation, he can see more. He completely ignores the evidence that's smacking him in the face that tells him that something else is at play here. Because if it was the curvature, there wouldn't be this band of dirtier refraction layer mirroring whatever we call it. Because uh, don't forget, there, are, there is no science for what we call it. Miles thinks this is curvature, but fails to tell us that there is clear evidence of mirroring. Why, so do, you think, why do you think the horizon extends in distance as the observer increases in altitude? Why do I think that the horizon what does what? It extends it get, <clears throat> the the higher you increase in altitude, the the longer the horizon is from you, so it grows because, as you go up. Because this layer of mirroring that we observe is effectively a brick wall. It, it we can't see through it. It reflects what's above it or below it, and it depends on whether it's an inferior or a superior mirage. 
in this instance, we are looking at um, an inferior mirage of the land above it. We see that it's being mirrored below it. And that what that's doing is blocking out the thing that is actually there, which is the beach, which is the reason why Alex, Cat Earth, will never see the beach when you're doing over uh, water over water observations because there is usually and virtually always some level of refraction now it varies sometimes it's more sometimes it's less but can you see that if this was a, an opaque layer of mirroring and you can't see through it that as you change your elevation and see behind it this is no longer blocking stuff and this is the reason why miles thought he was looking at curvature because he thinks the obstruction at the horizon is the curvature of the earth doesn't realize that he's looking at mirroring the way that we observe it. And me and Nathan and Ranty will sit here, look at it, and Ali, and go, that's obviously a refraction of some kind. So well, you guys <clears throat> think that it's the curvature of the Earth. Is it just me, or did anyone else on the panel notice that Riley avoided answering my question? No, I answered it specifically. You, it, it is just no, you, I, I said. I'll, I'll, give a better, I'll give a better explanation. No, I, I, I know what you're saying there, uh, uh, P-Miles. <laughs> no offense there, Anthony, but I'll, t I'll explain that quite simply. The higher you go up, the longer you see. What's what's so hard about for you guys to understand that? The higher you go up, if you put your eye, if you if you go down, if you look at a table and go down to eye level, wait a minute, if you go down to the down to the height of a table, right, and it's a long, very, very long table, and you put your eye down there, you can you don't see the end of the table. But as you come up further and further, you see further and further and further. So I don't see what the point is with them saying, making even making that an argument. Obviously, you're going to see further the ha uh, further up you go. So what, what's the argument? It's not even an argument. Well, the argument is the flat earthers say that the horizon is a result of a vanishing point <clears throat> due to perspective. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if 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 it was a vanishing point perspective, that's because it's convergence and that's the farthest you can see. Increasing your altitude shouldn't make the vanishing point increase because that's the farthest you can see. So it doesn't make well, any no, sense. No, 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 no. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have bionic eyes. That's the thing. Wait a minute, let me get us. It's highly I, illogical. We don't have bionic eyes. It's the further you see, the, uh, the higher you go up, the further you see. That, that uh, vanishing point is, is uh, only as far as you can see at a certain height. If you go up higher, that vanishing point goes further. It's like basically logic, man. The higher you get up, that's why they, they stuck a crow's nest in a ship, because you can see further on top of uh, 100 feet than you can down at the bottom. Yeah, I believe a crow's so, nest on a ship proves the sphere Earth. Thank you. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. The point is you can see further from a crow's nest. The same thing. Well, it doesn't so really matter. You, you can up, see further. The higher you go up, the further you see. End of right. story. There's your answer to that stupid, dumb Ali, question think, that you I think the point through. is it doesn't make any difference whether you're on a flat earth or a ball earth. If you go higher, you're going to see further. If you live on a ball, you're going to see further. And if you live That's on what a I'm just flat earth, you're going to see further. So it's an irrelevant argument. Exactly. I, I disagree, I guess. So you so you disagree with the fact the higher you go up the further you see. Well, I believe that is due to us being on a sphere, and I believe if we lived on a flat Earth, <laughs> that would not be the case. Right. Yeah, but you're looking through a medium, aren't you? You're looking through the air, and you're also at times looking through water as well, which is from the evaporation of the oceans. So as you're looking through these mediums, it's not like you're just seeing clear. It's there are things in the way particles those particles build up and eventually there's going to come a point seven eight ten miles away that you cannot physically look through though that those particles there is that much of a blockage they add up in an ideal world if there was no particles in the world and you were living in let's suppose in there was space and you can get into space and there's no atmosphere there and you can see a billion miles away fine but on earth that's different right different because you have all these particles in the way you cannot see so taking your logic about space and being able to see infinitely far in space, that's because there's no atmosphere and stuff in the way. On Earth, it's completely different. Okay, I, I mean, if that was true, the thing is the Simpsons mocked the flat Earth, right? And when the yeah, Simpsons the mocked the flat... That was true. The, do you not realize there's pollen in the air? Do you not realize that there's particles... Here, I'm trying air? to talk. You're not even letting me finish. No, you just so, said <clears throat> if. Yeah. If not, you did, but you didn't let me finish. You just said, oh, he said if, so I'm going to interrupt him now. Like, what are you doing? Okay. So the Simpsons <clears throat> mocked the Flat Earth, and 
they showed uh, someone looking out in the horizon and they could see to Paris or like, like they could see to China, you know, they could see the whole forever because the earth was flat when they're making fun of flat earth. So why would they do? So clearly like you, you can see forever on a flat earth. You could see, we could see Paris and all this stuff. Or at the, I guess there is a limit of eyesight within the atmosphere is 50 miles or whatever, but it would look like that. The, 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 the horizon is not the limit of eyesight. Well, why, why are you putting a limit on how far we can see? It all depends. If you look at the, if you look at the weather conditions, it will say. You've got cameras that focus in at a certain distance. Our eyes do the same. It's called focus. And our eyes can only focus for that distance. The further we see, the more we can focus. The higher up we go, the more we focus. That's all it is. It's because our eyes are not capable that, of seeing maybe further than three miles. End of story. That's it. I, There's no no problem about it. I, Even on a clear day, the horizon doesn't matter. Even on a clear day, the horizon will still only be. You might see objects behind it, but the horizon line, when everything's in focus, will be at a specific point. You can see it in photographs how the foreground, the horizon line is always like. Uh, it's all in focus up until the horizon, and then everything gets out of focus. There's your proof, man. I mean, uh, after the horizon line, it goes out of focus. Same with your eyes. Same thing. That, that's that's what made me change my mind. I used to think it might be flat, but Shrumanati had a video where the drone shows a sunset twice by just it, it watches the sunset and then it flies straight up into the air and it can bring the sun back into view. You know, if the Earth was flat, why can't it just zoom in? Why can't it just zoom in with the P900 and bring the sun back into? It just go higher up. <coughs> he's further. It's because it's because it's beyond the P9 or whatever. The no, P900. he's hundred. What he's doing? That is not proof. What he's doing that's, with the drone? That is not proof for a sphere. Yeah. Is, man, is he's rising imagine. himself above that dirty air with the drone? So the P900 still has to look through that dirty air. He's looking at the vanishing point at the when the sun goes down, and then when he goes in the uh, drone and he rises up. He's actually taking himself above that dirty air, so he's actually higher than the horizon at that time when he's filming it again. So then the camera, then the sun will set again um, to his uh, from the drone's perspective, and it will then go through the dirty air again. So it's just it's all to do with that d band of dirty air. I mean, it just seems more like it would be more logical that it's because of his sphere. See, that's where that's where the debate is, isn't it? It's um, what logic you tend to use you know you've got the ball earthers and the flat earthers and we'll always say the same i mean we will say that there's particles in the air and obviously on some days you can see much further evidenced with anthony's video when he saw Ireland and isle of man it was an incredibly clear day in that specific location um, and he was able to see a very long way however that isn't the norm the norm is that there's normally a lot of um, pollen and stuff in the air just stuff in the air that eventually builds or even low-lying clouds or mist or anything um, and if it had been maybe a little bit warmer perhaps the the oceans would have been um, evaporating more to create the clouds there's all that stuff that's in the way and eventually it stops you seeing a, di a particular distance even a p900 won't bring it back and that's why you can't see it all the way around the world you can't do it you rise up above all that stuff when you get in a plane you know you're looking down over the top of the refraction layer normally through clear air unless you're in the clouds and then you see nothing so if there's no clouds and i've flown a lot and there has been occasions where i've flown over land and there's literally no there's nothing in the way of what you can see it's just clean air how are you doing warren hello can you hear us hello hello how are you doing here good to be good to have you here good thank you how are you very well, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, carry on. Plane analysis. It's I listen to a lot of NBA podcasts and they actually mention Flat Earth a lot because of Kyrie Irving. And recently, I think a week ago, he was giving an a interview and he was telling people about doing their re own research and being open-minded to different ideas and things like that. And it, I mean, those those things are true, but I don't know. I think I think being open-minded or having an opinion on empirically observable things is kind of silly. And we there's so many there's so many lies and deception out there right now with the new world order. 
I don't I don't think we really need to add to it with alien conspiracy theories. <laughs> Yeah, we're not talking about alien conspiracy theories, though. Well, I feel I feel flat Earth is similar to an alien conspiracy theory, even though we don't believe in space or aliens. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, but it has about as much evidence. No offense, Ali. None taken. None taken whatsoever. You know, we're all our own people. You know? So I don't take thing. It doesn't matter to me what people believe. We're in agreement that the earth is flat. That's the main thing. All the yeah. little intricacies and all these stupid little things that people like to pick on and stuff like that. As I say, and I'll repeat it again, is the moon landings, satellites, and thing is or whatever is no evidence that the earth is a flat, is flat, or it's a ball. It's immaterial. We're talking about the stuff we can see down on the ground here. Is what we can see and what you guys have measured and what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Everything else is irrelevant. The moon, the stars, the sun. It's a whole different topic. So whole different P-Mars, topic. It doesn't prove anything. Pimas, no. you, you're you're back on the ball now, yeah? Uh, I've always well, I was a flat earther over a year ago, but when I did yeah. the research, it fell apart pretty quickly. Okay, so and then and then you just said you just don't believe in like aliens and stuff, so. Yeah, I think aliens conspiracy theory comes from the CIA. Okay, so if if we take your model, for instance, and we believe that we live in a uh, you know a solar system universe with trillions and trillions and trillions of planets and stuff, you wouldn't believe that you actually believe that life is only existent in this world and can be nowhere else. I think they're potentially lying to us about the universe and how that works and, and, and things way out and deep into space. That, that, I think, is up for debate. I don't think the shape of the Earth is up for debate, though. Okay, so you sort of believe them, and then you, on the other, in the, in the same breath, you don't believe them. I, I like to be skeptical, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I've done, I've done lots of research. I, I, I I'm really fascinated with how people are enslaved and how mind control works and, and psychology and all that and mass psychology. And so I study propaganda a lot. Um, Edward Bernays, Jacques Lowell are good, two good people to check out if anyone's interested in that. But by knowing how propaganda works, I feel I can discern truth better because I, I know how uh, manipulative techniques to get people to believe things. Because like uh, evolution was set up, if you study the history of evolution, it was all propaganda. P- people believe in evolution because there's all this clever propaganda techniques way back in the day. And today, I think flat Earth is just a propaganda technique. I don't think there's okay. much what, behind it. Um, I, know, I know the I techniques. I see the flat Earthers using the te- propaganda techniques in all their videos. So the, the term extraterrestrial that that was used quite a lot in the what 1920s, 1930s. Um, what do you think of that term as a as a term for humanity back then? What do you think they meant by extraterrestrial? Oh, again, that is me. <laughs> well, terrestrial <laughs> means terrestrial. Earth, right? Earth based. So yeah. extra, it'd be beyond Earth, I would think. Not additional. Mm, I don't know. I. I I I saw I saw a document. I actually do believe in demonic entities, and I saw a video that's saying that these UFOs or aliens are demons. I like that theory because if you look at um, alien abductions are are similar to like poltergeist activity. There's okay, like similarities. How about, how about this then? How about if these extraterrestrials that they were talking about were other humanoids that live on our plane, our terrest uh, you know terrestrial people? But perhaps beyond the you know the ice wall, if there was an ice wall beyond that, in extra land, in and other the, puddles. Sorry. Um. There's some like the extraterrestrial then. Other puddles, yeah. Um. But, but this is how they might have termed it. If you think back in the was it 1970s, 1980s, whatever, when ET came out, ET the extraterrestrial. And then they co-opted the term and changed extraterrestrial to mean um, an alien from outer space. 
So, of course, that did obviously people associate ET extraterrestrial with aliens. Aliens is in, uh, you know, uh, from outer space. So, see how they, ter- they, they co opted the term and they changed it from what people might have thought about it originally in the 1920s. Terrestrial means Earth, doesn't it? Sorry? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, say again. This doesn't, ter- doesn't terrestrial refer to Earth? To Earth, yeah. Uh, extraterrestrials as in extra humans. What I'm saying is that in when ET came out, the extraterrestrial, they changed the terminology from extraterrestrial meaning other things on Earth, other people on Earth, to uh, aliens from outer space by a, a film that was um, mm. produced in Hollywood. So now when you say ET, um, people think don't think of extraterrestrials as in other humans. They don't think of the, the words. They think of uh, an alien from outer space. And well, Trish and Chong uh, termed it extra testicle. So, yeah, it's like the discovery of the Sorry. Americas. If you, to, if you want to look at that in yeah, isolation, you've got a discovery that, of a, a country. Chong, that basically... yeah, that is extra testicle. Yeah, so you've got a discovery of a country that wasn't on the map and people weren't told was there. You know, and is um, literally. Can I just go back to the dirty air thing? Or you could just completely talk over me. So, yeah, so you have. Oh, sorry, Nathan, I didn't hear you. All right. You, so, you yeah, knew. the new when world, talk, as they describe it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So the new world, they called it literally the new world. So if you go and have a look at the map of Monday, there was no new world on there. They travel across, despite regardless of whether or not you buy that whole narrative of how they found the Americas, they found it and added a new world with extraterrestrials. Now, as Randy says, extraterrestrials are other worlds off planet Whereas, obviously, if we live on a flat plane, I don't know how much I buy the infinite plane because I've got no way of verifying it. But in our short history, you have the discovery of new worlds. And they're not going up, they're going out sideways. All right, fair enough. All right, fair enough. Thanks for cleaning it up. There, it's like the mythology of um, the end of the Lord of the Rings when they sail the the other beings sail off to another island, or King Arthur sails away to another island. There's like mythology of this like place where these beings went. Well, yeah, Jason and the Argonauts. If you think about him, how he had to go to a different um, place and and found the the lambs. You know, what was it? A robe or something? golden robe you know and there was um creatures out there that they'd never seen before or heard about and he sailed off to go and do that there's loads of in in history that it's all that kind of stuff i think they're so, um, to oh, i was just I'm, I'm i'm just a little confused about this dirty air theory okay or idea do you do any can, can we not measure the your, sorry Warren, do you do any experiments of your own firstly just asking you a question do you do you, do you have a p900 have I done any? Do you filming anything yeah oh, i've um oh, the only thing i've done is viewed the moon through the telescope all oh, right okay really See, if pretty, you did some land-based experiment no i haven't if you did some land-based no. experiments and you went out for a day and just like went to the ocean and just started filming you would you would immediately get what I say when we're talking about the dirty air. Literally, you would see for yourself. Yeah, I, the sorry, I, I understand. No, I, I sorry, I, I didn't clarify. I can't. I understand what you're saying about it, but isn't there some way to measure it? Because, um, like like we were talking about before, when you see the sun set, and um, a drone goes up or whatever, you can see it setting again. But you're saying because of the dirty air, you can't see that at ground level. You can't see it, you know, you can't see it setting twice on or, or again at ground level. Well, no, because you're not raising yourself up. Does that you? make sense? Yeah, but, does, but the measurements that's that's right, give us, yeah. sorry, Ranty, the measurements so it's because of the dirty a, air that we see it set or go away. But these things aren't factored in. The distance. Yeah, they're not factored in. What we get is measurements for curvature, which we would suggest is total nonsense. 
but this isn't factored in other than to bring things back from behind a curve. Yeah. I, th oh, I think well, dirty air is so a if I, code if, word if for I... curve in the flat earth community. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm trying to understand that if you elevate something up, you can see the sun again. That's because you're leaving this dirty air layer, right? Is that right? Yeah, you leave it, but then eventually the sun will set again and go through the same dirty air. No matter how high you go up on that drone, that drone could go up four different times. So four different elevations and see the sunset four different times. But every time it does that, there will come a point when the sun goes far enough away that it becomes small enough to merge into that dirty air. So we have approximately 30 minutes left on this live stream. If you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside the show while it's live, so toss me a buck or two in there if you're enjoying these live streams. But most importantly, if you would like to join the debate, simply click mute on the page you're watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the earth. There are a couple of rules. Please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. As I say, we have half an hour left on this stream. Please share the show as it does increase the live audience and in turn that increases the chances of a more diverse panel. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Wait for him to finish. Yeah, he's finished now. Did you want to share something? Yeah, just present my screen if you would. Yeah, done. So um, this is generally cited as the ball earther, my main weapon of choice when it comes to refraction. And in it, he contradicts himself somewhat because he claims that refraction is based on the yep. approximation of refraction expected under the atmospheric conditions. He, he, he uses this maths, 76R, R being the, the radius of the Earth, but he claims it's based on the standard atmospheric conditions. And when you look into the standard atmospheric conditions, it talks about the four variables that are necessary uh, to, to measure to be able to calculate the refraction that we see. Now, um, essentially, I'll just read it because it's self-explanatory. Uh, the ISA mathematical model divides the atmosphere into layers with an assumed linear distribution of absolute temperature against geopotential altitude. The other two values, pressure and density, are computed by simultaneously solving the equations resulting from the vertical pressure variation and the ideal gas law in molar form. And what these four factors do, are give, they give you a complicated set of maths that none of us can realistically work our way through. I'm sure the rumpus could magic his way through, but the four of us, like the people that are in this chat now and virtually all flat earthers and all ball earthers, are never realistically going to be able to calculate this because... It's a, it's a continuous calculation all the time. But this is the science. This is what they tell us is if you put these known values mm -hmm. into the equation, you will get out of it how much the light refracts. Um, and this is meant to tell us how much we will stretch or shrink the horizon. Um, it doesn't talk about going around the curvature of the Earth. It talks about the vertical aspect that we, that we see. And we can see evidence of that when we look onto um, the... I often cite this. I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar... But the um, skunk bay footage, um, we can see what the, the effects of refraction are over a full day because somebody's got time-lapse photography. And we can see that at the beginning of the day, so like 10, 20, when the sun's not high, etc., we're not seeing that much refraction. But as the day goes on, you can see that this starts to stretch and shrink the land here, this peninsula. You can also see the land in the background does the exact yep. same thing. So this stretching and shrinking is the vertical aspect that we, we were just talking about with regards to the maths. So in answer to your question, yes, we can calculate the refraction. We, we need to know a lot of factors and we need to continuously do it to see what we see, which is the vertical stretching and shrinking on the day-to-day -day basis or the hour or the minute-by-minute -minute basis. But it never mentions anything about the light bending around the curvature of the Earth, which would be an important part of the refraction calculator if indeed it was true. So the answer to your question is yes, we can calculate. Oh, the I wasn't actually asking about refraction. Well, you were talking about. Um, <clears throat> hang on, I'm going to have to answer this call. One sec. Sure. Yeah. What was the question again, Neil? What was the question you asked? 
Can we calculate the dirty air? Oh, so I'm curious as to All right, can okay, we well, measure how dirty the air is? Yep, I've got an experiment now. Is there, is this... What you do is, right, wait a minute, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an answer to that. What you do is, like, for example, this guy is stood here looking across there, right? What I would do then is, is I would film do what he done, and then I would take a higher position at the same time, uh, maybe go up 100 feet or 200 feet, and take the same view and then compare the uh, the footage and then you'll get an idea of the re refraction. Refraction. How's that? Well, the dot uh, here. You keep saying, re you keep well, saying okay, refraction, but I'm, I'm trying to. What do you want to call it? So, so is refraction and dirty air the same? I've no idea. I, I, I never termed the fr phrase uh, dot air. About dirty or... air and you keep saying refraction. So is that, are they one in the same? I've no idea. I'll say I'll say refraction then to measure the refraction and not the dot air. To measure the fraction, I don't know what dot air is. So you need you explain okay. that to me. All right. Well, I, I don't know what it is. Really, imagine it's a really, really, really foggy day, right? How far do you think you could? You see? got a dirty mind, Ranty. How far do you think you could see in a really foggy day? Not very far. Not very far. Yeah. Okay. So imagine that. Do, the do you want a number? Is, oh, okay. So imagine that the fog is half half what it was so you can see twice as far and then you reduce it again and you reduce it again and you keep doing that formula until you actually right. get to what you would expect to be a clear day right however there is still remnants of that fog in the air might be a particle every meter away and eventually eventually all those little particles that you're looking through will create yep. a blockage that you cannot see through and that's just the nature of the world that we live in. And that causes the sun to set. No, of course it doesn't cause the sun to set. But what it does is it gives the impression well, that it, the sun set. Sorry, it, co it causes the appearance of the sun setting. Sorry, yeah, I, I didn't the phrase that properly. That the sun sets. There comes a point when, you know, I mean, it's, if you see some of these... Um, so, it gives the so the sun never sets. Sun never it's just it's just the impression of it in setting. Well, obviously the sun goes far enough away at some point where you it goes dark where you live. Uh, the impression that it's setting is simply uh -huh. because it goes its angular size changes so much and gets it's caught up in that dirty air. The best way to explain mm -hmm. it. And, and to be fair, we still don't have all the answers. We still don't have No, I can hear that. Yeah. But this is how we experience it in real no, life. I, I, this is I, what happens. I, I fully understand that. Just that the sun doesn't appear to get smaller when it um, goes through the dirty I mean, air. I could do my lensing. Appears to sit. Yeah, but I could be doing my lensing. But if, if yeah. you, for example, lensing. if I get a torch, right, and I've got a lens, for example, right, and I shine it. I've, I've got the torch I'm next to the building. lens. Making a bit of noise here, just a minute. So, right, one second, then, right? So, right. So, if you've got a torch and you put it next to one of these, uh, like a big lens, and you look through, you'll see it near enough at its right size as it gets further away. So, the air acts it'll like get bigger, glass. right? It'll get less out of focus, it gets less out of focus, less defined, and then it'll get bigger. Are you talking about putting a torch so next a to like sunset, glass lens? Yeah, exactly. And, and put it right next to it and look through it. Uh, look through the lens uh, from, you know, so the torch is shining in your face so you can actually see the, or any object. It doesn't have to be a torch, any object. And you pull it away, it gets bigger. And when you look at the horizon, how many sunsets hmm. have you seen a, a huge sun? Yet for all day, it's been a certain size. It's just been shining hmm. its usual size and it comes to the sunset and it gets absolutely massive. So there's a lens in effect going on there. There's something, there's a phenomenon, it's a lens. So the actual size of the, the sun's getting made bigger. Mm. It's called lensing. That's true. Right, okay, so there's there's the there's your answer. Okay. But sometimes when I look up at the moon, it's high in the sky, it's not down low. And it's bigger, it's huge. Why is that? It, the, the moon's bigger when it gets in the 
But I thought I thought the moon doesn't change size when it goes through its path. It changes one point five percent. Right. Okay. So have you ever seen a have you ever seen a moon set? Have you ever seen the moon setting? Yeah, well, not over the ocean. All right, well, go watch it. Honestly, I tell you what, if you get about flat Earth and shit like that, man, it is some phenomenon. I'm I'm lucky here. I can actually watch it. I can go to the shore, right. and I can actually watch it. I should take photographs of it, but it's That's absolutely. Moon setting. See again. You, you want to what take photos of the moon setting? No, I'm saying you should if you want to see it. It's nothing to do with flat Earth, but it's it's just the, it's it's the. It's just yeah. a phenomenon. No, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, right. I'm a little confused because the moon, the, the moon can be a lot higher in off the horizon and be quite large, but the sun only doesn't appear. The sun will only appear large when it gets close to the horizon. So the moon's having, the moon's doing the opposite to the sun. In that yeah, sense. but that's what I'm saying. If you look at it when it sets, if you go and have a look at with the moon, and plus you've got to remember, also you've got does to remember big, that does the moon get even. Sorry, does the moon get even bigger when it sets? Well, that's something I've never actually observed because uh, when, when I've seen it, I wasn't uh, uh, like a flat earther or anything like that when I've seen it. So, I've seen I, the I'm moon low look. in the sky and it's, uh, and, and it's appeared a lot smaller and then I've seen it a lot higher in the sky and it's appeared a lot bigger. I've seen oh, really? the sun high in the sky and it's appeared a lot smaller. I've seen the sun lower in the sky near the horizon. It's appeared a lot bigger. Is, so that's, this, yeah, opposite, okay. that's the opposite of what I've observed with the moon. Certainly when the moon is on the horizon, it looks considerably larger. And when I just get a rough idea of its angular size, you know, you hold a fingernail up and just get an idea and then do it later on in the day, it certainly appears to be a lot bigger on the horizon. When I've mentioned this in the past, it just gets immediately fobbed off as, oh, that's just an illusion. It's just because it's near to the houses or whatever you're, you've are you got in your line of sight. It's that lensing but, effect, I suppose. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, like Ali, I wouldn't uh, profess to know the answer to that question. But what I would say is that certainly to me it appears the opposite, which is that the moon looks considerably larger on the horizon and then smaller oh, when it's above yeah. you. So do you think it's possible then that the sun retains its appearance in size due to it going further away, but it's also it's going through its lensing, so it's holding yeah. its size? Yeah, that's, it goes that's what away. I that, that was it. Ah, I got you. Okay. That's my explanation. Because it's going through more air. That's, that's, it, no, that's all right. Yeah. It's going through more dirty air, making it lens. Is that what you're saying? Is that, is lens, that, is yeah. I never said dirty air. Don't put words into my mouth. I never said dirty air. No, I, I said it's no, I, I, Sorry, I wasn't, I, I wasn't talking to you. Look, I, I, I'm not here to flip anyone's pancake. I'm, I'm just trying to... I uh, it's, 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 there's no pancakes here to get flipped. So carry on, mate. You'll get treated wrong with this. That was a, so that I, I was use a the phrase dirty okay. air and I use it because of no <laughs> science to describe it on our model, on any model. It's just my Aussie humour. Hi, I'm a moron. How are you doing? <laughs> Where am I? You shouldn't introduce yourself like that. Where am I? Not in here you if you're going to ask questions like that. Hello. Is he speaking? No, I've already no, no he's, he's left I kicked him. Where am I? Uh, exactly. Where am I? Uh, just for the sake of Wazza, I use the phrase dirtier to emphasize and, and enhance the point that we don't know what we're looking at here. Yep. There is no science for what we talk about because the refraction is described as bending light around the curvature of the Earth. And we know that that's not what we're seeing. We know that there's no curvature of the Earth. So we don't have science to describe this. as what you guys call looming which is the okay. bending backwards of light from objects from behind the curve of the earth. We describe that as an inferior mirage. For example, a boat will appear like it's floating because the sky is being inferior miraged below it. So it looks like it's floating in the sky, but actually it's just the sky being reflected below it. Okay. That doesn't mean that dirty earth per se. Okay. I'm just using it as an adjective to make the point that we don't know what we're talking about because there is no science on a flat earth. It's all on based on yeah, so around it. Well, how can we get some? We have no, we have no budget. I mean, you guys get like just for NASA alone, get fifty million dollars a day. I mean, we get like a P nine hundred between six of us. <laughs> Come on, yeah, well, they, so well, many planets. I'm sure you can organise something. 
<laughs> well, we try, and we just get laughed at. By yeah, the technology, hey, listen, well, the technology is restricted. The, the price of the technology is restricted for well, us to do that. How many flat earth? How many flat earthers do you think there are around the globe? Well, we are the minority. Well, apparently, the Chinese kind of accept flat. The FE core. I think a lot of Eastern countries will, accept it as flat, as I understand it. So yeah, lots of flat earthers in the in the eastern countries, but in the westernized world, yeah, we're probably very small in number. But do you think I there's think enough? I think in Thailand, you could probably they kind of they kind of you could collaborate at least. But I'm sure if you had someone that was versed in mathematics or physics and all that sort of science stuff you'd be able to put something together. I, I can't see how, why you need a huge budget. Ah, but the, point a lot is, of technology the, point the point is there, when we do bring someone on that's, uh, that's um, what do you call it, has got the qualifications, all the ball earthers just attack it. So it's it's no real, it's, does it, I mean, in the end, up, we don't, it's not them we're trying to prove it to, but, well, I've given up trying to prove to them because they won't, uh, the people that we interact on YouTube, these people don't want uh, they're not interested all they're doing is they've got a belief well, then, and some of them are just having you're... a bit of fun wait a minute wait a minute some of them are just having a bit of fun going around trolling anybody thinking it's funny which i find a bit i think if i if if, if i had the uh, uh, what do you call it I, I couldn't perceive a me ever being motivated enough to because someone uh, believed something else in me and actually spend the time or you know, and even my brain power on it, I've got better things to, you know, I'd, I'd rather read a book than uh, go and attack someone because they believe something different from me. I don't, I don't see the logical uh, reasoning behind it doing that, unless, of course, they think that they're going to save the world and they've got this so-called messiah complex that we got accused of having. Like maybe that's what they're doing, maybe that's their drive. They want to save the world from all these horrible flat earthers because, you know, hey, we're such a big a big group of people we're going to bring down society with our beliefs well then do you think your approach is all wrong by making a big song and dance out of it shouldn't you just sort of get together be quiet work out the maths work out the science go, here you go there's our proof oh, but the thing is the thing is that's fine right but what happens here if, if we bring it out and talk about it we get the experts from the other side explaining the mathematics to us explaining refraction I think so. They actually feed us. No, but you've got to they have your experts. I think the reason Flat Earth is so popular is because we don't have modern day freak shows anymore. There's no like a circus freak show we can go check out. So we go watch Flat Earth. Oh, you can. You can go to Discord or uh, uh, Earth Discussions. Dude, that's exactly what he's been. There's loads of comedy out there, uh, PMARS. Don't. I mean, there's loads of channels there. Lo loads of all Earth channels that they just talk rubbish. Uh, they're freak shows. You are getting a chance to no, see people yeah. that are psychologically damaged. They're damaged people. The way that they attack and interact with us. There's your freak show, matey. You know, I mean, you don't need to uh, make up the, the flat earths are freak show. The freak show is the people that see, are attacking all this, us. There's your show. There's your circus. All this, all this, all this arguing and name calling and all that's all, if I may say bullshit, sorry, Nathan, but I think it is. Um, you, you really just need to you know, come back with some real, you know, that can't be some real science that can't be um, debunked, I suppose. Well, we've got a photograph and what we've presented in terms of real science is mathematics to account for things that aren't really there being there, which is just complete nonsense. Whereas what we present yeah, is just, here's just a photograph, photograph of, we just present a photograph of what's actually there and line up landmarks. I mean, I was going to ask P, what part of what we did with the Isle of Man footage, lining up landmarks on a photograph, do you find freakish? Peach, eh? But by your own admission, by, by your own ad ad admission, your, your, your whole uh, philosophy is um, repeatable. It's some things that, experiments, is, experiments that are repeatable. And then um, the photograph you took was on an exceptional day, which to me sounds like it's not that repeatable. 
well, need to have definitely an repeatable. Day with exceptional Not clarity easy to repeat. Here. That's different, though, isn't it? Being easy to repeat and repeatable are very different things. I wouldn't say it's easy this doesn't to sound repeat. Easy. It, but it's definitely repeatable. Oh, sorry, Nathan. I talked over you. Can you say that again? Yeah, it's n not easy to repeat, that I'd agree with, but definitely repeatable. Mm. Yeah, well, some of the, uh, some, okay, some of the um, globe experiments are difficult to, to repeat, I agree, but a lot of them are easy, apparently. I haven't done it myself, though. <laughs> sure, but they normally revolve around equipment like balls dangling and things of that nature, pendulum swinging. Very few of them actually take mm. place in the real world and look at real world observations like a photograph of an island. Mm. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> we can agree to disagree there. Well, well we've, all, we've all, look, we have uh, data as well that you guys still haven't picked up on yet. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't know whether when we're going to release it, but um, it'll be. Oh, that's it'll blow your socks off! It'll blow your socks off. Uh, uh, because I it explains it. it explains your curvature, and it disproves your curvature all at the same time. Okay. Okay. When's that due to come out? Do you think? Well, we I, I need to discuss it with Nathan yeah. and uh, and Anthony, and we need to formulate a plan on how we release it. Okay, so we're looking. You think it'll be the next well, I month? I can't say. Are you looking longer than that? I can't say when it will be. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But so, you know, so what, this this is the no video that just keeps on giving, basically. What What is your response though to that? Mm. I mean, you've said we've oh, got no look, experiments that I, are repeatable. I, I personally. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you, you said we've got no repeatable experiments, but yet we've spent weeks, literally weeks, dicing up something that is absolutely repeatable. And your objection was, well, it's not easy to repeat. No, but... I didn't say you haven't got any. It's not. I didn't. I didn't say that. Well, you did. You said no. that. You... I didn't say you've got no. I didn't say you've got no repeatable experiments. No, you actually said that it had to be repeatable. Oh, I. I, I, I said it. You, you, it's difficult to repeat, yeah. Like no, the that's photograph not what you took. That wasn't what you said. That was the correction that Nathan gave you. Okay. He said, you guys have got to have experiments that are repeatable. And I said, it is, re it is repeatable. And you said, well, you sort of alluded oh, that okay. other people have right. tried and failed, therefore it's not repeatable. And I said, well, it's just difficult to repeat. But I'm kind of trying to gauge your response to it. So we've got right. evidence of a flat Earth. And... Yeah. It seems that you're like, well, let's look at other experiments, or you've not got enough, or it's not repeatable enough. But we've got one that's definitely repeatable. What's your reaction to it? Well, uh, I think it's quite interesting. I don't know if there's been any mistakes made. I'm not an expert. But, but the, un the only thing um, I don't quite uh, agree with is that there's so many other things out there that tell me it's not flat. What? So from that angle, I'm, I'm wondering whether this is an anomaly or if there's a mistake made somewhere with something or other. I don't know. That, that's yeah, that's just my view. Well, I mean, well, there's a, there's there's a, a reaction. Page oh, actually, wait a minute, right? Ali. Sorry, I just want to wait... get this in. Sorry, baby. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been diced up to the nth degree by people on both sides, people who believe it's a sphere, the Earth that is, and people who believe it's flat. Mm. And there's a conclusion been drawn, mm. and the conclusion is as follows. Obviously, the photo is what it is. We can see what's in there. You cannot change that. But the explanation for seeing the things that we see is that we have refraction bringing bit things that are actually not there, physically invisible to you, because they sit on the other side of a curved Earth, being projected up to sit perfectly on the horizon line and look indistinguishable from if you were actually closer and could have direct line of sight with these things. So in essence, on the globe side, you must accept that what is in that image is a holographic projection of the land that sits beyond your view. In other words, you do not have line of sight with any of the things in that picture if you live on a globe. Now, 
being a flat earther, my explanation is considerably more simple. We see them because they are there. We are just looking at them. And that is necessitated by a flat earth as opposed to holograms looming and things that we can't see being there. So you kind of have to pick yeah. one of the two. It's not that there's any mistakes been made. We've gone through it with a fine tooth comb. And the accepted rhetoric from the globe side is that you are looking okay. at mirages, holograms, whatever you want to describe them as. In other words, what you see, you cannot really see. So the question is, do you accept that what you see in the images like of the Irish illusion. man are not in fact there? Or do you think you can see them? And I just, oh, want, to, I just, want, to, I just want to answer some people in chat because they seem to think that we're withholding well, just, evidence. Just before you do, I want to hear his oh. answer. Hold on, Ranty. I oh, want sorry. to hear his answer. Do you accept that we can just see the things in the photograph because they are there? Or... Can we not see them and we are having a holographic representation of things that are not there and we do not have line of sight with? Which do you pick? I I thought I did, sorry. Um, I think we can see the things that are in the photograph. Then you accept that the Earth is flat? No. That's the only explanation. If we see them, the Earth must be flat in order to see them. I see them in the photograph here. Yes, because they are there. And unless you are saying that they are not there and only holographic representations of things that sit on the other side of the curve, which factually is the explanation given by the globe side, if you want to accept that you live on a globe, you must accept that you cannot see any of the things in that picture. They are not really there. We do not have line of sight from them. They are on the other side of your curved earth. Therefore being holographically projected up to the horizon line and being represented as though they were there, even though they are in fact not. So do you accept that? And it seems the answer is no. Therefore, you must accept that we only see them, if they are there, because the Earth is flat. Hence, we have direct line of sight with something that is 30 metres your, off the ground. I accept seeing them in your photograph. Say again? Pardon? I accept seeing them in your photograph. Yes, but do you accept that in reality real they life. are not in fact there? I don't know. I haven't seen it in real life. Right, but you understand the mathematics. The fact is they are not there mm. in the globe. Do you accept that they are literally not there on the globe model or not? The mathematics would suggest that they're, they're not there as far as I understand them. So you accept that you are looking at holographic projections yeah. of things that are not there. You are a fantasist, correct? I accept that. I okay, can see you accept them in that your you're a fantasist. It's okay, that's good. Nick L and various other people also accept this complete and utter nonsense. Necessitated by a curve that we do not see. But that's fair enough. That's your rhetoric. That's your dogma. Right. Good for you. Yeah, and can we I all just... have a dogma, mate. Can no, I, I don't need say... any dogma. I just see the stuff. I don't need any explanation. I just see it. It's there because it's there and I can see it. It's the end of story for me. For you, it's holographically being projected up from around a curve that we don't see, from a line of sight we don't have. It's a holographic projection of something we can't see. If that's what... It's complete nonsense, but you can accept that and I if can accept that you, you think... accept that. If, if that's what you think, I think. No, it's I'm not what I think. think that's that. a fact. You can, you can try and bandy words with me and say, well, if that's what you All think, right. like the idiots that say, it's not holograms when you're a glober. It is. That is a fact. It is not there. It is geometrically impossible to be there. It cannot be there. It is not there if you live on a sphere. The fact that we can see it needs an explanation. Now, if you want to go to maths and fantasy, that's up to you. Me, I just see it because I'm a realist, not a fantasist. Nathan, are you familiar with a 360-degree camera? Hold on. We've got Blue Moon. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Good to have you. Nice to see you. I thought I'd join in for a change instead of just listening. Brilliant. Good to have you here. I, I've seen... Oh, sorry. Carry on. I've seen a guy in a Hangout, Nathan, take a 360-degree camera and mathematically show that you can see the curve with it. So... What about that? You can observe that. 
of miles. So yeah, with that, I'm going to say a massive, huge, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully for sharing this show. If you've not done so already, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video.